Wait a minute. Have you heard the strange tales of the whistler? I'm the whistler. I've come to the end of my rope. I've tried my best for 20 years to please Agatha. I gave up my painting and tried business after business and failed in every venture. Now, I, I can't go on any longer. I'm through. Another Sunday night, and again, CBS presents The Whistler. I, the whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. And so I tell you tonight the amazing story of the alibi. Poor Henry Farrington paces the library floor. Through his mind run the events of the past 20 years, from the day when he married the wealthy young widow Agatha Durant. Henry hadn't a dollar of his own then, nothing but charm. He still hasn't a dollar of his own, and now very little charm. Henry was a struggling artist, but Agatha was a businesswoman and was determined to make Henry a businessman. And Henry had tried, tried hard. Agatha backed him in venture after venture, bossing him, completely dominating his every moment. But Henry experienced nothing but failure, and gradually Agatha's love turned to disgust. And now, 20 years later, his artistic talent long since vanished, he realizes what a wreck Agatha has made of him. What are you doing in here, Henry? Morning, Agatha. I said, what are you doing? Why, I'm just thinking. Hmm, that's what I thought. What are you doing with the lights on in the daytime? Why, it's cloudy this morning. A bit dull in here. You don't need lights to think. Turn them out. Yes, Agatha. Are you going to do nothing but mope around again today? What do you want me to do? Do you know what day this is? Why, uh, no. What day is it? Perhaps I've forgotten. You'd forget your head if it weren't tied on. It's the first of the month. You go into town and collect the rent on the store buildings. Very well, Agatha. Shall I deposit it in the bank? No. Bring it back here. And hang on to it. You lost it last time. Or so you said. I did lose it. Hmm. You need a nursemaid to follow your every move. You've done a pretty good job of it. Did you order the garden hose yesterday? No, I... I forgot it. I had a lot on my mind. Yeah? What's bothering you now? Well, I've got a chance to get in on a pretty good deal. I need some money. What kind of a deal? Well, it's a... Uh, an oil lease deal. Who with? Why, uh, Joe Hammond. A 50-50 proposition. Joe Hammond? You know better than to talk to me about Joe Hammond. He's done pretty well. Yes, for himself. Double-crossed everybody he ever came in contact with. He's a good lawyer. You mean he was. Good thing I caught up with him and had him disbarred. He'd have stolen every dime I have. It only takes $2,000. $2,000? Add up all the thousands I've given you to put over business deals, and you'd have a fortune. You haven't done an ounce of business sense in your whole body. I never said I had. That was your idea. You started me on my business career, and you can take the consequences. What do you mean by that? I'm going in on that deal. I need $2,000. And one way or another, I'm going to get it. I wish I knew what you mean. You'll know later. Where are you going? Into town to collect the rents. You better bring it back with you. I will, Agatha. I'll bring the rent and... And what? And the hose. Of course. Good morning, Agatha. <clears throat> Threatening me. Well, I'll soon fix him. Agatha stands staring after him. Terrible thoughts race through her mind. Thoughts of fear... Disgust, hatred, money, death, revenge. Her head begins to whirl. 
She can scarcely breathe, her eyes bulge in terror, and she clutches at her heart, her throat. Higgins! Higgins! Higgins, the butler, rushes in, realizes at once that Agatha has had another of her heart attacks, carries her to the Davenport, gives her a dose of her stimulant, and calls Dr. Johnson. I heard her call to me, but she was unconscious when I reached her, Dr. Johnson. I gave her some of her heart medicine. And I don't remember her having one of these attacks for several months, Higgins. She's had one a week for the last four or five weeks, Doctor. Oh, dear. Well, she'll pull out of it in a few minutes. Her heart's in a terrible condition. She's been under some extreme emotional strain. Oh, yes, yes, yes. She's coming around now. Ah, morning, Agatha. Hmm? Oh, what are you doing here? <laughs> well, you haven't been eating enough apples. <laughs> Who sent for you? What's happened? Well, well, ma'am, you had another attack. I called Dr. Johnson. Attack? Nonsense. No, it isn't nonsense, Agatha. You've had one of the worst attacks you've ever had. No. Believe me, if you don't drop all this business worry and control your temper, well, you won't have many more. Oh, bosh. Tell me, what brought this on, Agatha? Some deal turn out badly, lose a little money someplace? No, I didn't. Oh, all right, Agatha. But I'm warning you, you'd better slow down, forget business, and control that temper. Do you realize what your blood pressure is? No, and I don't care. Oh, dear. Henry must have pulled a dilly. Who said anything about Henry? Oh, no, no, no. Take it easy, Agatha. You know, you're your own worst enemy. <laughs> well, I'll be running along. Good. <laughs> Plenty of rest and quiet and no temper. Goodbye, Agatha. Goodbye. <laughs> Poor Henry walks around town for a half hour and finally gets up sufficient courage to see Joe Hammond, the ex-lawyer. Well, Henry, have you got the 2000 Well, no, that is not exactly, Joe. When will you have it? I can raise it, but it'll take a little longer than you gave me. Now, look, Henry, I bought that lease and gave my check for 4000 Your check bounced. You didn't have a dime and you knew it. Now I'm caught short because of you. You'd better dig up the 2000 or I'm turning it over to the county attorney. I'll get it, Joe. How will you get it? I'll figure it out. Did you ask your wife? Yes. But she refused when I told her it was a deal with you. Oh, you're a sap, Henry. You know she hates me. I've told her she was all wrong about you. Ah, I couldn't stand to be around a woman like that. Uh, sometimes I... Well, I can hardly stand it myself. I, I'd kill her. What did you say? I said I'd feed her ground glass. She's done enough to me. And if I had to put up with her as you have, well, I'd do something about it. What would you do, Joe? I'd wring her neck. I can't stand a bossy woman. You'd kill her, would you? Oh, well, I was just speaking figuratively. You've tried hard, Henry. You've done your very best to be a successful businessman. It isn't your fault. So far, you've failed, and she's sore about it. Left her entire fortune to her niece. A mere nitwit of a girl just out of school. I know, but she took out a $50,000 policy payable to me. Oh, what good does that do you? If you die first... But she isn't very well, Joe. Eh, she may live for years. You may bump off tomorrow. Yeah, of course, I doubt that. Nothing wrong with you that a uh, bank account wouldn't fix. Is that? No, I guess not. Ah, she's got all the money she'll ever need. She's not in a jam. She's seen everything. And we'll all go to that niece. Uh, except the insurance made out to you. Uh, that's payable in a few days, you know, after death. Yeah? I'm in a jam, Henry, and you're in a jam. You better start figuring some way out. I'll give you to the end of the week, Saturday at noon. You mean you must have the money by then? Oh, no, no, not necessarily money. Just, uh, well, just some sort of uh, assurance that you know where you can uh, really get it. I see. Yeah. Well, think it over. And I'll always be around if you want any uh, legal advice. Thanks, Joe, for the extension. I'll be in touch with you. Agatha is in her room now, sleeping. Her niece has come home from college, having graduated, and brings with her a young man. The two young people are waiting for the aunt to wake up. Well, believe me, Janet, this is certainly a swell place. I had no idea it was like this. I thought you'd like it, Grant. I've never lived in a house with more than six rooms. This place must have at least 15. More than that, darling. Mm -hmm. Your Aunt Agatha certainly must have a lot of money to be able to keep a place like this. Mm, she has. She has more than she knows what to do with. 
What did the butler say happened to her? Oh, she she had another attack. It's her heart. She has a terrible temper and pays no attention to the doctor's warnings about getting excited. According to Higgins, the doctor said he doubted if she could stand another like the one today. Hmm. Must be in pretty bad shape. Do you think she'll like me, Janet? Why shouldn't she? I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I warn you, she's a sour face and grouchy. But don't let her upset you. She'll get used to you. I love you very much, Grant. That's all that really matters. I love you, Janet. More than anything in the world. Uh, oh. Your uh, aunt will see you now, Miss Janet. Oh, thanks. Come along, Grant. All right. You wait outside the door. I, I want to talk to her first. I'll try to get her in a good humor. Boy, this is a tense moment. I feel like I'm going before a judge. Hello, Aunt Agatha. How do you feel? I feel all right. How long have you been here? Oh, about half an hour. Sorry to hear you had another attack today. You should take things more calmly. That's easier said than done. How's Uncle Henry? He's in town. Good for nothing, man. Oh, I wouldn't say that. What do you know about it? Nothing. Oh, I think I know Uncle Henry rather well. All men are the same. I wouldn't trust one around the street. Well, that's a matter of opinion. Um, Aunt Agatha, I... Well, I... Well, well, what's on your mind? What are you trying to say? I have a surprise for you. Surprise? What do you mean? I brought a guest home with me. A guest? Huh? Least you could do was warn me. Who is she? It isn't a girl. Uh, who, then? Just a minute. Come in, Grant. Aunt Agatha, this is Grant. Grant? Grant who? Grant Collins. I'm very happy to meet you, Mrs. Farrington. What's he doing here? He's going to stay here for a while. Why? Well, because... Because I asked him to. Well, I didn't ask him. But, Aunt Agatha, you don't understand. I understand, all right. And I don't need any explanations. Is this an example of what you've been doing at college, running around with men? Well, this is different. Grant is more than just a friend. I... I have enough trouble around here now without taking on any more. You'll have to leave at once. What? You don't know what you're saying. I certainly do. Well, perhaps I can explain You it. keep out of this. This doesn't concern you. I'm afraid it does concern him, Aunt Agatha. Well, who is he? Where'd you meet him? What does he do? Well... I'm just an ordinary person. I haven't come from any great family, if that's what you mean. And I haven't any money. What's your business? Well, I haven't any regular line. I've done a lot of things. But I'll hit on something. Hmm. Another one. Just like Henry. You ought to have more sense than that, Janet. But I love Grant. Nonsense. And I love Janet. Young man, you better leave this house before I lose my temper. I'm not going to have my niece throwing herself away on a nobody. Now get out. Just a minute, Aunt Agatha. This is my home, too. Grant is here at my request. Is that so? Your home, hey. It's your home only so long as I choose to make it so. You're my heir, but if you dare to defy me, I'll change that quicker than you can bat an eye. Oh, you're jumping to conclusions. After you get to know me better, I I think you'll like me, Aunt Agatha. Aunt Agatha. What do you mean by Aunt Agatha? I'm your nephew. Uh, uh, did you say nephew? Yes, he did. Grant and I are married. Married? We were married today. Uh, <laughs> How dare you? How dare you do such a thing without consulting now, please, me? Now, please, Agatha, don't let yourself get excited. Get out of here. Get out. But please, Mrs. Farrington, give me a chance to explain. This marriage will be annulled immediately, Janet. Or I'm through with you. Do you hear? I'll change the will and leave you nothing. It's final. Now get out. Get out, both of you. Leave me alone. Get out. Uh, come on, Grant. Let's leave her alone before she has another attack. Well, do you think we should? I'm all right now. Leave me alone. Say, I... I never expected anything like this. Neither did I. She certainly is in a bad way. Yes, I didn't realize it was quite this serious. She's in a terrible mental state. Well, this is a pretty situation for us. Well, I don't want you to leave, darling. You, you'd better wait a few days until until she's better. There must be some way to win her over. Oh, I, I hope you're right. I'll have a talk with Uncle Henry. Something's happened to cause all this. I'll find out as soon as he comes in. Now, don't worry, darling. Everything will be all right. I hope so. I'll just keep out of her way for a few days and see what develops. Now, long after dinner, Uncle Henry sits alone in the library, deeply lost in thought. On the desk before him is a small calibered revolver. His fingers toy with the weapon. And as the door opens, he slips the gun into his desk drawer. Janet closes the door and steps into the room. Uncle Henry. Huh? Oh, come in, Janet. I wanted to talk with you alone. Talk with me? Very well. What is your opinion of Grant? Why, I like him. Fine boy. 
Do you suppose it would do any good if you talked to Aunt Agatha? I? You know as well as I do how she feels about me. And in her eyes, Grant is an exact counterpart of me. She thinks it's the same situation over again. And she's determined that you won't have to put up with a failure as she did with me. But how does she know he'll be a failure? I'm her yardstick for all men without means. What happened today to cause the heart attack? Her violent temper. There must have been a reason. Yes, Janet, there was. I had a deal on. And I needed $2,000. She flew into a rage and had the attack after I left the house. What on earth are we going to do about her? I don't know, Janet. As for me, well... I've come to the end of my rope. I've tried my best for 20 years to please her. Now, well, I... I just can't go on any longer. I'm through. What do you mean? Just that. There's nothing left for me now. I'm too old to try anything new. Too old to go back to my painting, and Agatha is becoming more resentful every day. I'm... Well, I'm... I'm late. Uncle Henry, are you trying to tell me that... that you're planning something? Planning something, my dear? What do you mean? You mustn't, Uncle Henry. Regardless of how you feel, there's still much to live for. Is there? You've always been so kind and good to me... I just couldn't stand it if you were No, 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 please, darling. <laughs> I'm much older than you are. Well, I just see things differently, that's all. And it's been terrible lonely in this house since you've been gone. Now it'll become lonelier and lonelier. Filled with hatred and greed and resentment. And I couldn't stand Promise it. Promise me. Promise me you won't do anything foolish. Janet, whatever I do will be for the best. Please believe me. Everything will come out for the best. Around 12 o'clock that night, Janet, Grant, and Henry go to their rooms. And the big house settles down to sleep. Then, two hours after midnight, Agatha stirs uneasily in her bed. An eerie figure in white stands beside her. She opens her eyes. What? Well, who's there? I want you, Agatha Perry. <gasps> no! And Agatha, and Agatha. Good heavens! Grand Uncle Henry, hurry! What's happened? I heard a scream. Janet, Janet, what was it? There's a medicine. Give her a dose. I'll rub her wrists. Oh, she's as cold as ice. What on earth could have happened? A nightmare? She's had quite a shock. Oh, her pulse is fairly strong. She's coming, too. Oh. oh. What happened? Well, you screamed. You had fainted when we got here. Yes. Yes. There was someone in this room. I saw it. Saw what? I don't know what it was. It was a figure in white. Auntie, you, you must have had a nightmare. Maybe so. It, it could have been a nightmare, but... It seems so real. Look. The window to the balcony is open. Did you open it, Aunt Agatha? No. No, I never keep it open. Look outside, Grant. You mean it might have been a burglar? My diamonds. It could have been a burglar. And your scream frightened him away. Look in the box in the drawer. I did. They're all here. Not a sign of anyone outside. Do you feel better now? What's happened, ma'am? Anything wrong? No, Higgins, nothing's wrong. Go back to bed, all of you. I'll be all right. And lock that balcony window. Now it is the next night. Uncle Henry is sitting alone at the desk in the library, lost again in a deep study. Grant and Janet are in the living room. You really think it might have been a prowler last night, Grant? Well, I don't know. The window was open. It could have been. I'm inclined to think it was nothing more than a nightmare. She's, she's been so upset lately. Well, if it was a burglar, he didn't get anything. Well, that's true. And he might try it again. If he does, he's liable to get a good scare. What do you mean? This. Grant, where did you get that revolver? Out of my trunk. Oh, please, Grant, I, I don't like guns. Let them take what they want. If, if you start shooting, they're liable to shoot back. Besides, jewels can be replaced. Now, don't worry, darling. I couldn't shoot anyone if I tried. Anyway, there are no bullets in it. Then what good is it? Well, it's a little thirty-two I use in school for a starting gun. It has nothing but blanks in it. You yeah, see? It won't hurt anyone, but it'll give them a good scare. Well, blanks or no blanks, I don't like guns around. Now, don't worry, darling. Oh, good heavens, it's 7.30. I'd better get dressed or we'll be late for the Morrison's party. Oh, yeah, you better hurry. I'm all ready. I want to see about the car. 
Oh, uh, Higgins. Yes, sir. Come in, sir. I was just having a little coffee and a bite to eat. Would you care for anything, sir? No, no, thanks. Uh, did Rollins check my tires and gas? I did, sir. Rollins and the others are all off tonight. I put your car in front. Oh, thanks. Excuse me, sir. The Farrington residence? Yes? Oh, yes, Mr. Hammond. He's dozing in the library. I'll get him. What? Oh, oh, I see. Yes. Yes, I'll tell him. Goodbye. Joe Hammond wants Mr. Farrington to come over to his place this evening. I'll tell him. Excuse me, sir. Anything else I can do for you? Oh, no, no. I'll be running along in a few minutes. Uh, by the way, uh, since Mr. Farrington's going out, you'd better look in on Mrs. Farrington once in a while. Oh, I will, sir. So Grant and Janet drive to the Morrison's estate to attend the charity lawn party. And Henry goes to talk things over with Joe Hammond, the ex-lawyer who holds Henry's bad check. Then toward midnight, the lawn party breaks up and Grant and Janet return home. Well, that was a wonderful party, Grant. I never saw so many people, friends I haven't seen for four years. I was thrilled to death. Yes, it was quite an affair. I wonder how much they raised. Good many thousands, I imagine. And did that red-headed gal sell war bonds? <laughs> I'll run up and see how Aunt Ag Agatha is. I'll be right down. Right. Uh, I think I'll have a nightcap. Want one? No, thanks. Hello, Grant. Oh, hello. Party over already? Yeah, big affair. Had a great time. I got to talking business with Joe Hammond, and first thing I knew, it was almost midnight. Grant! Grant, call Dr. Johnson! What? Uh, Janet, what is it? Aunt Agatha... Come quickly, Uncle Henry. Call Dr. Johnson, Grant. You can't get him. Call the emergency hospital. Get a police ambulance. I'm still trying to get Dr. Johnson, Janet. Never mind, Grant. The police surgeon says we won't... We won't need Dr. Johnson. Did he pull her out of the attack? No. He couldn't do a thing for her. She was dead when they got here. Good heavens. Well, she must have had a severe attack. Well... You see, Grant, I... Just a minute, folks. I'd like to ask a few questions, and I'd prefer that you didn't carry on any conversation with each other. No conversation? Well, what do you mean, Janet? Never mind. I'll get around to that. Take all their fingerprints, Davis, while I'm talking. Yeah, Captain. Yeah. I demand an explanation. What do you mean, fingerprints? How long have you known Janet Farrington? Oh, about six weeks. Where did you meet her? We're at a dance, a party. Did you know all about her? Who she was, her family? Certainly. What do you know about him? Well, I just knew I loved him, and that was enough. I take it your financial condition is not so good, Grant. Well, no, I haven't any money, but what's that to do with it? Did Agatha Farrington object to your marriage? Yes, she did. She threatened to change her will unless we had the marriage annulled, but... Did you I... care whether that happened, Grant? Well, certainly. I didn't want Janet to lose her inheritance. What are you getting at? Grant had nothing to do with it, I tell you. I know what you're inferring, and it's ridiculous. Grant didn't marry me for my money. Uh, what's this about prowlers around the house? Well, we aren't sure there were prowlers. Agatha claimed someone was in her room last night. The window was wide open, but we aren't sure about it. It was a nightmare. Well, she did keep some jewelry in her room, and from the looks of the room, someone certainly went through it thoroughly. Who knew about where she kept the jewelry? Why, all three of us knew. And Higgins the butler knew about it. Where's Higgins? Why, I never thought of that. Probably in his room. I'll look. Higgins! Higgins! He's unconscious! Yeah. He's been blackjacked. Higgins. Higgins! Uh, 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 Mr. Farrington, what's wrong? Who slugged you? Uh, slugged me? Why, I've been asleep. That's what you think. Feel the bump on your head. Uh, uh, good heavens. Did you hear any shots tonight? Shots? No, no, I was in my room. I must have dozed off in the chair. Then it must have been a burglar. What goes on here? Anyone would think you were trying to cook up a murder. No, Grant. The murder's already been done. What? Yes. Mrs. Farrington was shot in the chest. Twice. Shot? But, but that's not possible. Shot? Uh, here you are, Captain. We found this gun in the young fellow's room. It's been fired twice. Oh, this is silly. That's a starting gun. Nothing but blanks in it. Who fired it? What? I, I, I haven't the slightest idea. All right, Davis. Take the gun and the bullets from Mrs. Farrington's body and have ballistics check on them. Well, young fellow, according to the ballistics test, the bullets that killed her were fired from your gun. But it isn't possible, I tell you. 
My gun had nothing but blanks. And there were no fingerprints but yours. I'm afraid you're stuck with this deal. No, please, please listen. I couldn't have done it. You had a motive, a gun, and an opportunity. And furthermore, you left that party for a half hour tonight. We checked on it. We have a witness who saw you leave. All right, what if I did? My gun has blanks in it. Oh, please believe me. I couldn't bring myself to do such a thing. I, I couldn't. You killed Mrs. Farrington, and you might as well admit it. I didn't. I didn't shoot her. I swear I never wait, touched wait, her. I... I can't stand by and see an innocent person suffer for this. The boy didn't do it. I did it. I had a better reason. I planned it. I'd have enough of Ag- Agatha, and I-, I was caught in a jam. I did it to get the insurance she left me. I was desperate. I came back and slugged Higgins while he was asleep. Shot Agatha and left the house. I don't believe you. You're trying to cover up for him. But it won't hold water. We've got him dead to rights. But I couldn't have killed her. I only wanted to scare her. I... What? Go ahead. Oh, nothing. Then you did come back here. Spill it. Well, all right, I did come back. Grant, what are you saying? I had the gun, but there were nothing but blanks in it. I doped Higgins' coffee before I left the house. I came back and went to her room. I fired the blanks. Why? Well, I knew she had a weak heart. I figured the shock would bring on her death. I was the figure in her bedroom. I couldn't see Janet lose her fortune, but I didn't want to give her up. Grant, how could you? I can't believe it. I tell you, I came back and shot her. If he fired blanks, then I must have fired the bullets that actually killed her. Look at his gun. Real bullets in it. What? Why, they are bullets. Where's your gun, Farrington? Here. Open it. Great Scott. Why, they're blanks. That settles it. Come on, young fella. We've had enough talk about this. The evidence is all against you. Yes, Grant. The evidence is all against you. And nothing can save you now. Try as he might, Henry can never convince anyone that he planned to kill Agatha. Although it is true he did come back and fire at her, just as you did, Grant. But it was definitely you and your gun that fired the fatal bullets. Of course, I know what you're wondering. How did the real bullets get in your revolver? (laughs) You know, don't you, Janet? Tell us what happened. I saw Uncle Henry put a revolver in his desk as I stepped into the library that night. I was afraid he was going to kill himself. When Grant showed me his gun with the blanks, I switched the shells in their guns to keep Uncle from committing suicide. You see, I I never dreamed that Grant had a plan afoot to cause my aunt's death by mental murder. (laughs) There you are. Another tale of greed and revenge and hatred, all unraveled as neatly as you please. (laughs) CBS has presented The Whistler. Original music for this production was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and comes to you from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next Sunday, same time... I, The Whistler, will return to tell you another unusual tale. (laughs) Good night. (laughs) This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.